the main objective of the project is uh, to be able to define some uh, mathematical equation that help us to solve the problem of modeling photovoltaic problems. Photovoltaic systems are really complex systems that need to be modelized by a lot of math because we know we, we need to know the dependence of uh, volt of um, irradiance and temperature of the voltage current of the photovoltaic system in order to be able to predict the production of energy. Uh, this is a real question because need a lot of math and uh, for this reason I'm happy to can explain the importance of math in the modeling of photovoltaic system. The main result conclusion of the project is that thanks to the math it's possible to define the existence of a set of equations able to describe in an exact way the behavior of a photovoltaic system. This means that there is a powerful tool for the design and also a powerful system to understand better what happens inside a photovoltaic system. So this is a really important result and is able, we, are, we are able to achieve this result thanks to math. Es para mí un honor y para mí es un placer poder presentar al profesor Antonino Laudani de la Universidad de Estudi de Roma 3. Él empezó como profesor en, en la Universidad de Estudi de Catania, en Sicilia, con una beca de investigación, donde estuvo hasta mediados de la, del año 2011, momento en el que se fue como profesor a Roma, donde está en la actualidad como profesor titular en el Departamento de Ingeniería. El profesor Laudani es doctor en Ingeniería Electrónica, y es experto en diferentes campos de la ingeniería, como el electromagnetismo, donde realizó su tesis doctoral, la ingeniería fotovoltaica, en la que tiene uno de los mejores algoritmos existentes en la literatura, para el modelado de la curva característica de un panel solar, y la inteligencia artificial, en la que tiene un algoritmo único en el mundo, capaz de aprender en tiempo real, por ejemplo, de un pianista, y tocar una versión de una pieza conjuntamente con el músico. El profesor Laudani es un investigador de reconocido prestigio internacional y esta afirmación viene respaldada por sus 120 publicaciones según la base de datos de Scopus con 1.067 citas provenientes de 610 artículos. También me gustaría destacar que es el secretario del Electrical Science Group, Group of Italy, un cargo científico de mucha relevancia en Italia. Durante las últimas dos semanas, el profesor Laudani ha disfrutado de una estancia de investigación en nuestro centro, el Instituto eh, Universitario Centro de Investigación Operativa, a quien quiero agradecer sinceramente todo el apoyo y las facilidades que nos ha ofrecido, en particular quiero dar las gracias al profesor Juan Aparicio, que es el director del centro, así como a parte de su equipo Sixto y Carlos, que nos han facilitado todo tipo de gestiones. Obviamente quiero dar las gracias a nuestra universidad por la ayuda económica concedida para esta visita en el marco de las ayudas 2019 a la movilidad internacional hacia la UMH. También me gustaría nombrar en esta parte de agradecimientos a mis compañeros de equipo de investigación en fotovoltaica y coorganizadores de esta conferencia, José Manuel Blanes y Vicente Galeano, profesores de nuestra universidad que han estado estas dos semanas codo con codo junto a mí y junto al profesor Laudani para avanzar en varias líneas de investigación y esperamos que este trabajo culmine con varias publicaciones científicas. Quiero aprovechar este momento también para dar las gracias a mi grupo de investigación, optimización y estabilidad de la UMH, a través del cual se solicitó la ayuda, liderado por mis directores de tesis que están aquí, los profesores María Josefa Canovas y Juan Parra, a quienes debo en gran medida todo lo que soy científicamente, y de los que espero haber aprendido, eh, además, ser un buen anfitrión. Perdón por lo un poco. <risa> y, eh, para finalizar, quiero expresar mi más sincero agradecimiento al profesor Laudani por haber aceptado venir a la Universidad Miguel Hernández de Elche a compartir sus conocimientos con Blanes, con Vicente, conmigo, y por su gran amabilidad y sencillez. Espero que sea el inicio de una fructífera relación y espero que haya disfrutado mucho de su estancia, igual que espero que el público presente disfrute, disfrute mucho de su charla. Y nada más, muchas gracias a todos por venir. Now we are all yours. Ok. <laughs> Thank you.
I, I thank you very much, uh, all the people from uh, University of Elche, because uh, they are so kind and uh, are also a very important team in the, the activity of photovoltaic. I will show you my result, but it's known that uh, uh, these results were then used successfully also by the researcher from this group, and so I am happy to be uh, share with them uh, uh, my knowledge, and uh, I am sure that it will be possible to have uh, future collaboration. Uh, sorry, this um, this talk was organized uh, in uh, in Italy. Speaking about what happened. Okay, <laughs> he came back. Was organized, uh, um, and uh, the main team that I I was to discuss was uh, mathematics versus photovoltaic system. But at the end of this talk, there will be a small section that is the di that is uh, tailored to the presentation of, of my so my project that is related to artificial intelligence and music. It is uh, really nice, and uh, we, today we have just uh, try a, a, a small demonstration. There are also some video that uh, I will see you. So I hope that uh, you will be able to enjoy this presentation. I'm sorry that this presentation is English. My English is also bad. So, but I try to make my best to make you uh, not too much annoy. So, sorry. Uh, uh, what is uh, important to discuss? Uh, okay, the first slide is not so important. Uh, go, go to, to, to the substance. Okay, uh, the, the starting point when uh, you study energy, solar energy is the sun. It's clear. The sun gives us a lot of amount of power, and uh, you have to consider that uh, it's transfer 122 petawatt. That is 122 for 10 at the power of 15 watt every day on the uh, our Earth's surface. And it's clear that this, uh, this was initially used for eating as eater. And uh, you know that uh, just to start uh, to the link with uh, mathematics and uh, with engineering, with the scientists, uh, we can uh, remember the, another Sicilian, like me, <laughs> uh, mathematician, that is Archimedes, which uh, used uh, the mirror and the light of the sun to burn a uh, Roman ship and to try to win a war. Okay, everybody of, na of us know that if we, we leave the car at the sun, we then uh, find it very hot. Okay, so it's clear that the sun is able to uh, be an eater. And uh, really, the first application, one of the first application of the uh, solar energy was as a system for eating some fluid and uh, exploit the eating, the eater of a mirror, by means of ray light and mirror, and uh, build a a sort of thermical thermal central. And for example, we show here a, a, a central. We employ about 2,000 mirrors, and it is able to give 10 megawatts of power. That is a lot amount. But another way to exploit energy solar is also to build the so-called solar simi that are in in. A, in Italy is Camino, maybe it's very similar also in Spanish. That is, the solar energy, the solar ray uh, uh, imp impact on this part and then uh, make the uh, uh, heat transferred and uh, when the, uh, the air go on, uh, on the Camino, on the chain may, there is some turbine that has activated and so there is a transfer in the, the energies that become uh, an, an, uh, uh, activate a turbine, so there is uh, uh, energy production. This, is, this plant is in, 
in Manzanares in Spain and there are a lot of uh, in plants like this one in Spain in the, uh, around Sevilla for example or in other uh, or Granada in the south of Spain. Okay, but solar energy is not only a system to eat anything. Really, the eating, the heat, is, uh, the transfer of heat is a consequence of other mechanism. In particular, if we remember, uh, sorry if this uh, uh, initial part is very didascalic, very didactic, but uh, there are a lot of students, so I prefer to make uh, a discussion that is uh, really simple but comprehensible to everyone. Uh, the light is a wave, you know, or maybe not, but it's an important. <laughs> Uh, but uh, the light is, can be seen also as a, an, an, a set of particles that is called photon. Uh, when uh, this particle impact uh, everything, they eat the system. But there are some particular properties when this particle impact particular uh, substance. Instead, for example, this, uh, I, I think that this you will know, is Einstein was uh, recovered, is, he received his uh, uh, Nobel Prize to uh, have discovered and described this mechanism that is photoelectric. Photoelectric is that when light impacts some uh, particular substance, this substance emit electrons and under opportune excitation there is a conduction, there is a flow of charge. Okay, this mechanism is really similar to the one for which the photovoltaic cell works. That is, the ray light impact uh, a, a structure that is uh, built by means of two layers of semiconductor materials. One doped with phosphorus and another one doped with borus. In such a way to boron, in such a way to, uh, to have, uh, this is a component that we, you will uh, uh, found in uh, next year of your course, I, I know that uh, a lot of students from uh, in, in, this, uh, in this class are electronic engineering, uh, so you find that this is a PN junction that is the basis of the electronics and that is the basis of the, the of a component that's very important that is the diodes. Okay, when the lights try in, impact this region, there is an excitation and then the possibility to have a motion. Okay, in this case the motion is not related to an external excitation, but you just need to, uh, to have two wires and contact these wires to, uh, to a load, to any kind of load, and then there is an energy production. Clearly the realization of this uh, system becomes possible by the technology evolution and by the realization of very large cell as the one show is show here and in this case we can see that we can imagine that we have two uh, metal conductor one in the back and one in the front in the front the metal conductor are very small in such a way to allow the light to pass and uh, this is the structure always built. So you have imagined that this like this one but with a metal here and another metal electrode here. A cell clearly can produce energy according their dimension, their area. So a single cell for example is able to produce if uh, is uh, about 10 centimeter for each side about to one or two watt a single cell. But uh, if we want uh, more power, we need to connect more cells together. And so this is the basis for which we have a panel or a module that is a connection of more cells, to, more cells together. And in our modules we can have some hundreds of watts, so we have a lot of power. Clearly, if we put together a lot of modules, we have a power, power photovoltaic system plant. And for example, this is a plant in Germany, and this is 
a plant with 25 megawatt of power. Clearly, we can exploit also some other properties. For example, we know that the sun is not always in the same position in the sky, so we can try to follow the sun in such a way to uh, receive the, the, the ray, uh, the sun ray, the sunlight in the best way. And uh, this is, uh, uh, for example, a plant that is in Spain, where there is a, a tracking system. So the Modules rotate, try to follow the sun. Clearly, when we speak of photovoltaic system, we have to understand that there is not only the photovoltaic modules, but there are also a lot of electronics ca which allow us to change the, uh, the signal, to control the power, to control or uh, make the right conversion of the energy and so on in such a way that we are able to um, use this photovoltaic system as, uh, as a real uh, power plant production for a uh, power plant for energy production and to connect it, it to energy distribution system. Clear, there is so when we speak of photovoltaic system a lot of electronic systems that control them. So it's a, a team that is really important for electronic engineer. Uh, okay, try to know to not be too annoying. Okay, uh, what the, clearly th there are some, some questions that we can uh, make ourselves to better understand the things. For example, we can ask what happens where there is not sun? Or, what happens if the intensity of the sunlight is on our way constant? What, what the system works in this case? And uh, does the sunlight eat also the PV cells that are mine some problem with this eating? And uh, how can I image, that is the uh, best uh, question, to modelize this uh, uh, photovoltaic system? What are the problems in uh, uh, the modelization? And maybe you can have also other, other questions. Okay, start with the simple one. What a problem when there is no sun? Okay, <coughs> sunlight are the fuel, are like the gasoline for your car. So if there is no gasoline, the PV system does work. It's really simple. And uh, what, uh, what is the dependence, uh, the, what, what happens when the density of sunlight change? When the density of sunlight change is like when you push your uh, gas pedal in your car, the car go. Uh, faster, there is more energy production, so when the intensity of light is higher, there is more energy production. When the intensity of light is uh, not so much, there is less production of energy. So, from this point of view, the discussion is really simple. And uh, what about the, the, the temperature? Clearly, we know that the sun light uh, impacting the, the PV module produce also eating heat. And uh, clearly this will be a, a point in, uh, of interest because it will change the operation of the photovoltaic cell. But we will uh, discuss this later. Now try to understand better how we can model mathematically this kind of problem. And so try to understand what is a PV cell. Okay, to be as clear as possible, I make some uh, uh, basic discussion. So, at the moment, we can, my, we can uh, uh, suppose that a PV cell is like a battery, because it's a system that can produce energy. Okay, if you have a, uh, imagine a battery of your car. In the battery of your car, you have uh, uh, an information that is the voltage of the battery, but it's the same is uh, for the battery of uh, we use uh, you use for uh, for telephone and so on. That is means that uh, a battery, for example, of the car is uh, 12 voltage, 12 volt. Sorry, 12 volts. Volt is uh, uh, the measurement unit for the voltage. It's not important if you don't understand what is voltage. You, uh, I, I speak clearly for, for the student you will uh, uh, understand later <laughs> in your study. But the, the thing important is, mathematically, uh, a battery with 12 voltage is a battery that is 
a value of voltage constant okay and uh, if we imagine to put this in a, a graph in we in a picture in a uh, cartesian system in which we have in an axis the voltage in another axis the current that is the flow of charge determined linked to this voltage we can see the so-called current voltage characteristic and this characteristic for a battery is really a, a ideally a, a, a line parallel to the uh, y axis or to the axis of the current what does it mean? this means that uh, the voltage is uh, always the same what for every value of current admissible ok but this, if this is true we have a, a strange situation because the power is the product voltage for voltage multiplied current so this means that theoretically a battery can have also an infinite power if we imagine that the current is infinite clearly this is not possible because if you take your battery for the car you, you can read ok the maximum current is the peak current and there is a fixed value what this mean? this means that uh, in, uh, in your, the real characteristic is very similar to this one this is uh, so a point that represents the maximum current that can be uh, um, generated by your battery and this is clearly a, a current voltage graph current voltage plot that is able to represent the what happens in, in your battery clearly we need to introduce in our model some things that is related to this slope and this is a resistance in circuital modeling Res resistance can be seen as a component that is able to uh, describe the loss inside the battery but in this case is mathematically linked to the to the slope of this line so have also a mathematical meaning what this discussion? this discussion is to introduce what is uh, the current voltage characteristic of a photovoltaic cell that is uh, very strange because we have a characteristic uh, really different if you look is, is this near is this uh, black in this uh, plot the other characteristic is the power at the moment uh, we are not interested to look at the power look only the black line what does this mean? ok there is a first part that is almost constant but is uh, parallel to the voltage axis that is not a voltage generator but a current generator ok? then you have uh, that this generator depends on the sunlight the irradiance and uh, the sunlight uh, intensity is measured in sun the same word that uh, indicate the, the or, or sun and a sun is uh, one kilowatt on meter square so clearly the, the if you look at the slope it's not exactly zero there is a, a part in which we we note that it become a curve and this is described by these two components there are two resistors that describe the loss inside the photovoltaic cell clearly boy, there is a point in which this slope come really uh, down and this is the mechanism described by one, from the diodes the diodes are the basic component of uh, PN junction that is a PN junction is really a diode so the best way to describe this curve physically but also mathematically is to use diodes one or more ok if we transform this equation sorry I, I, I know that is a, a bit annoying but I try to, to make my best if we transform this equation in a mathematical relation we can find a mathematical relation like this one clearly what is the problem? the problem is that this parameter that is for example this the value of a generator 
this uh, uh, a value describes the behavior of diode. This is another component that describes the behavior of diode. This is uh, related to the exponential. And this is the two resistance. Clearly, all these components are unknown. We need to understand how they uh, to understand their value or, or can they be modelized by or by starting from measurement data or by starting from data sheet that is uh, data furnished us by manufacturer. Oh, there is a lot of math here because to do this we have to employ several mathematical techniques. Okay, sorry. Before to uh, be further, uh, we look uh, to the other methods, that is the method that don't use the circuit representation. Uh, take care that the circuit representation is very important because we connect the uh, photovoltaic cell, photovoltaic model to our circuits. So to describe, to simulate this, we need a circuit representation of the problem. But there are also many approaches that are mathematical based. For example, this describes these curves, that is the EV curves, by a parametric analysis where M and N parameters are, can assume a very strange value. But there are also some uh, approximations that use very strange mathematical uh, expression that uh, is, uh, is very complicated to understand but uh, is, uh, is effective in some case. And other we uh, start to use by the approximation, Taylor series, a lot of math. There is a lot of contribution of uh, mathematica, mathematicians to this problem. And clearly, uh, we know the, 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 the contribution is given also by the people we work with neural networks, that is artificial intelligence, because there are a lot of papers, thousands of papers, which use artificial intelligence to describe the mechanism of uh, operating of photovoltaic cell. So, the way that now I discuss with you is not the only way, but is the, uh, the most important one. Uh, I try to, to, to make uh, my, myself as <laughs> fast as possible. Uh, okay, take care of this curve. Why is this important to study? It's important to study because we connect the module to a conversion system. And uh, the conversion system can be seen as a load. As a, okay? But uh, when uh, they uh, go to the when the irradiance condition change, the load must be changed, but must be follow the condition in order to be effective. So what this means? This means that we have to have a way to describe how the parameter change with temperature and uh, with irradiance in such a way that this equation is able to make, give us information for the conversion system that is give the control parameters for give the best result. Okay, sorry. Uh, I, I can see you some result and then if uh, there is uh, the, some uh, important point we'll discuss uh, later. Okay, some result. First, uh, look at the, the starting, the, the mod modeling the uh, photovoltaic cell from data sheet, from data, data from manufacturer. If you look this, uh, what is the data from manufacturer? Manufacturer gives us the information about uh, short circuits point, that is the intersection between the uh, voltage, uh, uh, sorry, the current axis and the curves. Open circuit voltage, that is the intersection between voltage uh, axis and uh, curve, and a point that is called maximum power point. What is maximum power point? If we look at the curves here, is the point where we have the maximum. Okay? With this information and also we uh, Sorry, there is, okay. With the indication of dependence uh, of this parameter from temperature, it's possible to uh, describe a model in which we are able to individuate the, the variation of the parameter. Really, this model always is built. It's built really simple. 
okay, it seems simple. <laughs> you have to imagine this is the expression and we impose the condition, that is we impose for example v0 and in this case, sorry, e0 and v equal to v of c and with some uh, elaboration we find this equation. Then we impose the short circuit condition the T V0, the voltage zero, and the current assignment. And with some elaboration we found this equation. Then we can assign the maximum power point condition and with some elaboration find this, this three equation. Okay, now we have a three equation where if you look at them we can see as a system. In uh, this equation uh, appear E, the variable, the variable as the one indicated with the ref 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, this is the four variable and this, there is another variable that is not here um, indicated but because it's inside the exponential is the ideality factor n. Okay, from the mathematical point of view this problem appears to be clear and should be clear that one can uh, manipulate this equation. Okay, it's clear but it's not so simple and uh, above all was not done until five years ago about. Because uh, nobody uh, has uh, think to, okay, why don't try to, to express uh, some variable as dependent variable from others. In this case, if we for example, image that we have e, e radians, uh, current of diode, and the conductance. The conductance is, is the inverse of resistance, so a one on the resistance value, as uh, dependent, value, uh, dependent variables, and leave the uh, serial resistance and the ideality factor as independent one. Okay, this result was first presented by me in. Uh, 213 and uh, these are the so-called reduced form. They open, uh, 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 there was a very important result, not because it was achieved by me, but because to clarify a lot of things. You have to understand that uh, this, uh, the photovoltaic research started in the first year of uh, 80. There is a 30 25 years of research and in 25 years of research nobody has done this analysis because nobody has looked at the equation in a mathematical point of view. So I am an electrical engineer but I love a lot math and when I encountered the first, for the first time this equation I look at as mathematical equation not an engineering, electrical engineering equation. This reduced form are a very powerful uh, system and allow to achieve a lot of observation. Um, I, it, the, the first thing is that they, they, this point are dependent from the other. This is this equation, this value are dependent from this two. So if we remember that we want to have a physical meaning of this variable, this variable should be positive. That is mean that we can define a maximum value for the other variable. That is, we can define a domain of research for, the, for, for search the variables. And uh, I come back now. And if we look at this domain, this domain is like this triangle. This is not really a triangle because this curve is defined by this expression sorry, this expression, that is the maximum value admissible for serial resistance in function of the ideality factor. In this expression there is this W mean 1, that is the Lambert function, that is a, a powerful mathematical expression, that don't have many importance from the point of view of computational, because it is really easy computation, easy to compute, but it is a lot important because it allows us to describe in a compact way, in an elegant way, the behavior or, or device. This is the, the number function. I, sorry, it's, 
maybe there is no too much time to discuss uh, its property, but it's important to, to see that there are a lot of research from photovoltaic people in uh, the computational uh, um, speeding of lambda functions. So it's a research that involves a lot of maths. Clearly, this is domain. What it means? The important thing is that if you choose any point inside this domain, thanks to the reduced form, the condition on open circuits, short circuits, and maximum power, power point are perfectly satisfied. That means that each point you are taking give a perfect exact correspondence in this three point. But this also means that there are infinite points that are able to satisfy this equation, these three conditions. It appears a simple result, but uh, clearly, until 230, this was not noted by nothing but nobody. And uh, it's important to, to add another, uh, another observation. If you look at here, it's the, all the points pass for the point of maximum power point, for uh, all the curves pass for the maximum power point, point, but don't have the maximum power there. Why? Because we impose the passing, non the de derivative. Try to impose the derivative, try to, to make that uh, the de derivative will be zero in correspondence of the point. If we make this, we achieve another equation. And if we put the before achieved parameter, parameters, that is this one in that equation, we find lastly an, an equation in which only two variables are present, uh, serial resistance and ideality factor. We can solve this only numerically, but when we solve this, we achieve that, oh, sorry, I go, uh, uh. Okay. We achieve that for n, every uh, arbitrary chosen n, there is only an Rs admissible. And uh, consequently, when we choose uh, an arbitrary value of n, a compute Rs, and then put this couple inside reducer form, we achieve that have an infinite set of curves that satisfy the passage from open short circuits, open circuits, maximum power point, and having the maximum power point in the, really in the point we have designed, we have uh, indicated. That is, this is a, a problem because we have infinite solution of the problem and we don't know how to choose <laughs> a solution. But there is an also an important result that, uh, oh, this is the, the domain. The domain uh, practically is not more the triangle, but uh, these uh, red curves. And uh, these are the, the point used in the previous example to show the, 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 the result. Okay, there is another result. These two curves uh, intersect in a point. This point defines the maximum ideality factor admissible for the photovoltaic cell. Clear, it still appears a poor numerical result, but if we take a statistical analysis of the maximum admissible uh, ideality factor, and uh, this was made for the first time by me in 240, we can see that they, they, there are a, a strange behavior in the other factor, and there are a lot of ideal factors that are lower than one. Why I told you this? Because researcher in the first year of uh, before this publication, a lot of time tells, oh, okay, we can choose for n the value one, or we can choose for n the value one point three without any motivation, and if you choose, for example, for this amount of modules, that are a lot amount of modules, a value lower than one, one 
or a lower than 1.3, you achieve non-physical solution. You achieve, for example, a shunt resistance negative, a serial resistance negative. That means you are not have a physical circuits, but you have only a mathematical model that don't have any correspondence. This is a, a simple result, but it is a, it was a breakout in the research before and after. Okay, this is only to summarize what we have done, but uh, what, uh, what the community must, must have to do now. The community must uh, have to research for a fifth equation. A fifth equation that allows us to have a unique solution of our problem. And uh, to do this, uh, we must investigate a lot the math that there is in, uh, in, uh, in uh, photovoltaic, but also the data coming from manufacturer. In order to establish if there is a better way to represent the data. Okay, uh, not every equation is good because the, in literature a lot of people uh, present different equations, but not all equations in, is good. For example, I uh, I show you this one that is one, one more really famous to use in literature. Clearly, it's possible to have a unique solution, but in, if you took, uh, take the data from a database, we achieve that until for the 15% of, uh, of the uh, manufactured data present in the database, the formulation is not able to give physical meaning solution. That is the, uh, practically the uh, they suggest a uh, ideal factor that is larger than the uh, maximum one of the possible. This means that we need to re continue this research and this is an open problem for engineer, for physics and also for mathematics. Okay, the, the quest for a fifth equation is still open. Few, few notes how to, uh, to use the same things when you have data not from manufacturer but you have experimental data. You, you measure a curves. Okay, when you measure a curves, there is the problem that you have a lot of noise in, uh, in, uh, in added to the measurement. So it's not uh, feasible to, to look at the um, uh, reduce the form as exact one because uh, open circuits condition, short circuits condition, and maximum power point condition are influenced by noise. But uh, you can always use uh, it to define the problem and to, uh, okay, when you have to, to, um, to solve a problem uh, in this case, uh, it's a problem in which you, can, you want to fit the data. If you want to fit the data, you must uh, or define a problem that mathematically is defined as a least square problem, or define a fitness function and try to minimize this fitness function with any technique you know uh, or you prefer. Okay, this uh, the, the example you show, you start from a, a, a curve that is mathematical, but you have data, and then you try to fit in the data in such a way there is a correspondence. Uh, clearly, in our case, we have uh, numerical measurement, have uh, still uh, the output of voltage given by means of uh, lambda function. Again, lambda function is really important for the representing what happens. And we can define different type of error according to the kind of analysis we want to do. Uh, okay, also in this, uh, there are a lot of researchers in the world that present the bad result. For example, they don't use the correct expression, but make start from this one and make this approximation. Consider the E as output of V measured and E measured, but this is uh, really a wrong. But they still uh, continue to propose a result of wrong. So don't, uh, you don't, not, not, all, not all is published is uh, good. Uh, unfortunately, there are fake articles are also among the literature. Okay, however, the pro this problem is a really complicated one and can have, can have a lot of solution. 
Uh, so the, this has been considered, considered a, a benchmark for, uh, uh, for optimization technique. That is, you have a measured data you can use, for example, to test your optimization algorithm. But it is also a problem to distinguish among the, the result. Okay, what is proposed for the solution of this problem is to use the reduced form to give some further information to the solver. And uh, there are two famous uh, uh, models for which the measurement are available in literature from then uh, 1986, so this is uh, 30 years that uh, people use this, mod, this uh, test, this data for test. And I define a normal square problem by using the, with the only modification that I use reduce form in the uh, phase of solving it. What is important uh, in the introduction of reduced form is that the reduced form res, uh, reduce the number of variables from 5 to 2. And if you use only two variables and define the problem in the domain RS, uh, serial resistance and ideal factor, there is a unique solution of the problem. So, differently than the five parameter case in which there are the problem is a, a multimodal problem with a lot of solutions. If we suppose to use reduced form, there is only one solution. It means the solution can be achieved with any kind of method without any problem. Really fast. This is for the two set we have uh, used in literature. And uh, clearly this unique solution can be seen as uh, starting point for the solution of the entire problem which you use all the five variables, still the final least square problem. And in this table, these are the results that I proposed in uh, 2040. Uh, and as uh, you can see, the result were of uh, reducer form was better than other results achieved before that time. Today, I am happy that uh, the results were, were improved by uh, other people, by defining another method. Clearly, uh, it's really important because this means that research is not finished, but with my work, so I am happy to do to, to this. And uh, this means that we must go further. We must continue to investigate this problem. This is for the one first case, but this is also true for the second example. And uh, I am happy to give you the information that uh, the method that at the moment is the best one in the world is given by your uh, teacher here, that is uh, Javier Toledo, Vincente Galliano, and uh, Jose Blanes. So uh, you, have, you must be really uh, happy to do this because we have uh, a lot of good teacher that give you very well information and are able to to share with you the, the science. We are starting this collaboration also to to see how we can meet together the two methods that can improve further the the the, the situation because uh, it, the, the, there are advantages in the T SLL method, but uh, in some other case, reduced form are, are other advantages. But uh, you have to be happy of, for this. So, okay, this, the problem is not finished. That is, this means that we are again searching for a unique solution. We want to understand what is done and what we can do. We want a formulation that is uh, as robust as possible, that is the data should be uh, as, uh, in, as low influence as possible from measurement data, from uh, noise measurement, in such a way a good noise, uh, uh, signal noise uh, ratio. And uh, we want to try also different formulations. So the problem is not finished, it's just uh, uh, in continuous analyzing. So, uh, it's uh, really important to, to work with this kind of modelization. 
Another thing to do is to understand better the uh, relationship between parameters and irradiance and temperature. And to do this, there is the, the reduced form TLSS. No, TS, uh, TLS, oh, okay. The, the method from uh, your, uh, your professor will be tested together in such a way to have uh, a good uh, result also in the describe of this mechanism. Okay, uh, now uh, uh, I have prepared some slide in which I will show some, um, some other things, but uh, I think that uh, it's enough. So if uh, there is question, I'm here for question, or if uh, there is no question, I'm here to show another things that uh, very shortly, but it's about music, artificial intelligence, so it will be very nice. Wait, uh start with uh, the first slide only to 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 propose to you the, my the logo of the, our software that is Emint. Emint is for artificial musical intelligence and uh, this uh, project start uh, uh, two years about uh, two half years ago when some artists come uh, launch a request uh, to several universities of Italy. This artist was uh, two famous artists in Italy, that is Alex Braga, that is uh, a DJ, and another, that is Danilo Rea, that is a pianist. And they uh, ask, uh, oh, according to your, uh, uh, your opinion, it's possible to create an artificial intelligence that in real time is able to crack the mechanism of uh, pianist in such a way to follow in real time. Uh, I have a lot, my team, I, I have a lot of experience uh, with music and artificial intelligence. I have a lot of experience in artificial intelligence and coding. So we accept this, uh, this uh, cast and uh, we realize this software. And uh, the software was started to be presented in several uh, um, meeting and uh, particularly we was invited by Google to represent in the Centre Pompidou the, a performance together with uh, an artist that is a, a Spanish Lux Luxembourgese artist, this, this, in this case Francesco Tristano, he, he lives in Barcelona and uh, this is the concert make in, for the Centre Pompidou but we make also concert in, during the Mutec in, uh, in Barcelona in the, in the last March and uh, have a master class in, uh, uh, in Barcelona during the Sonar because we are introducing this uh, software like an instrument also in the conservatorio. In, uh, we have uh, an agreement with the Santa Cecilia Conservatorio, this is a conservatorio from Rome, really important. Uh, and uh, this is uh, what is done. Okay. Oh, this works. It works in a really simple way. He listens the, the pianist by using the MIDI protocol and uh, listens the pianist without any 
intelligence before. It's like a, a, a pianist, a, a player that have a really good ear. So it, only listening is able to start to follow the, uh, the artist or the, what is done. Thanks to this, this is the first tentative of have an artificial intelligence without a pre-training. The training becomes during the performance. There is no intelligence before. When we restart, all is changed because there is no database, there is nothing, but only the training during the performance. Okay, uh, I want to show you some uh, some uh, things and then some uh, uh, small uh, video and then uh, uh, today <laughs> without any idea 10 minutes before starting this uh, this uh, talk with my colleague Vicente tell me oh I have a MIDI file with Game of Sutron we can try <laughs> the output of artificial intelligence so you can show in real time what artificial intelligence do done Okay, pre uh, before I, I show you some, uh, some, uh, sorry, before I show you, so, sorry, I show you some video that are useful to understand what happens. In this video there is, uh, in the starting, the, the pianist that start to uh, song some, uh, play some notes, then stop and artificial intelligence responds with uh, their, their, make, their uh, uh, wh what they have understand from uh, the, the pianist. So there is, uh, the, the, there is a delay to show this mechanism. It's, uh, it's, it's this is the pianist, this is the artificial intelligence, again pianist, again artificial intelligence. The, the late time is reduced in such a way they start to, to play together. But you can appreciate the, the difference between the song from pianist and the song from... There is, there is also a video installation in which you can see the note, the, the note that come from uh, pianist are in blue and the note that are from uh, uh, the artificial intelligence are in red but is uh, uh, to, to have us, uh, an idea so to what happens. And this was, uh, yeah, the, in the meantime, the, the delay is reduced in such a way they all sung together. This concert was made in the March of 20, uh, 2080, for, in, for Banca Mondiale, uh, the organization uh, of, of Green, that is uh, the, the, a very important organization. Okay, just another video only to, to, to show you that uh, it's possible also to have uh, not only with uh, jazz music because in that case uh, the musician was a jazz musician so here there is a, a sort of classical music here the pianist is Fran Francesco Tristano unfortunately the, the sound is not so good because it was uh, registered by my smartphone so the, clearly it's possible to distinguish the piano from uh, other sound that are from artificial intelligence because there is the only piano 
and the other sound comes from artificial intelligence. All in real time and without anything before. Consider that I am an electronic engineer, so this, uh, <laughs> this will be also your future if you study with a patient these things and also artificial intelligence as uh, at the starting of the, the talk, uh, the director suggests to do. <laughs> very famous uh, songs that are played in this case but this was uh, an event organized for Ericsson which asked us to, to give a private uh, concert and you can see also here the, the representation of what happens uh, by video okay there are a lot of uh, um, a lot of things, material that can be found on internet about uh, this, uh, this project and uh, there is also the website that you can uh, consider, it's very simple, it's uh, a uh, mint, so it's, it's really simple, however if you need further information I can give you this, uh, I can share with the professor and with you all you need. Now we can make a short test, <laughs> but uh, is uh, really it, uh, I think that was uh, think that this morning. Okay, this is the interface of Emmet. Uh, clearly, this is not the interface of the commercial version. This interface that I made for uh, for Emmet, so it's really complicated. Uh, and in this case, we uh, use a MIDI file that is from Game of Thrones. And uh, if you look at this, uh, when I start to play, there is here uh, the indication that there is the training phase, and then there is the execution. Okay. Okay. This is uh, the original MIDI file with only. You can say that this is a MIDI file, so it's not have only the orchestration, it have only the piano. And uh, now we add. Uh, the artificial intelligence is just running. You can see there is the training phase and really it is working, but I don't have activated the sound. Now I add another instrument that is from artificial intelligence. Sorry, the, uh, to reduce the volume. And this is the original piano, this is the artificial intelligence. Work together. Clearly it's an orchestration, so he, he used it to accompany the original one, not to substitute. And here you listen together. Then we can add another instrument, for example in this case we choose a basso, an acoustic basso, and there is another instrument. In this case it's a basso so you, you need to take a long note. And then uh, we try to add uh, another instrument, that is, in this case it's a mellotron, that is uh, uh, an instrument that was uh, not no new. But, oh sorry, <laughs> we have to restart the, 
<coughs> the Mellotron was an instrument very uh, was about uh, developed about in uh, 60 uh, 60 and was a lot used by Beatles for example they love a lot you can see that from the single song from of uh, This is the only piano. This is the only piano that is not as clear, the game was strong, but nothing more. And this is when you add all the instruments given by the artificial intelligence. Clearly, here we are not looking for the volume, but we have to adjust the volume to make a perfect orchestration but it's only to show the powerful of artificial intelligence in this kind of uh, issue. Okay, <laughs> I think, thank you. because they are here, my students, to, yeah. to, to say that they can do this if they study a lot. They yeah. <laughs> calculus, algebra, mathematics, in general, and of course, electronics. And uh, if there is any question, si hay alguna, alguna pregunta, si... No worry, also in Spanish, uh, <laughs> if uh, <laughs> it will be <laughs> translated. Perfectamente. No, eh, I no entiendo, but tu batu puoi tradurre. You can translate for me, okay? Eh, so, if uh, eh, anything. Dice que si hacéis alguna pregunta, la podéis hacer en español y yo la, se la traduzco, y si no, pues nada, os vais para la clase y muchas gracias a, a los profesores que, que han venido del departamento y de otros departamentos. Muchas gracias por venir a todos. Y nada más. Gracias. gracias.